Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be going over some more specifics of my gun and how I built it. I had someone request a more detailed look at the gun. I'm also going to be going over how a QEV or quick exhaust valve actually works. I won't be taking it apart, but hopefully you can understand how it works when I describe it to you. Um, with all those things being said, uh, I do have my first how-to video, which I felt was pretty explanatory. Um, if you can't, <laughs> this might sound a little cruel and mean, um, but if you can't figure out how to make this gun by my first video, you probably shouldn't be messing around with, you know, 500 PSI pressures you probably don't have a way of making 500 PSI anyway. Normal shop compressors go to about 100 to 150. Um, even that can be pretty dangerous, so you should probably try and get a better understanding of pipe fittings and what things are pressure rated to before messing around with that much pressure. So that was kind of a uh, just a warning. Um, I will go over the very specifics, like exactly what I use to make this gun, and good luck finding a couple of the parts, but let's get into it, and uh, I should say good luck finding the exact same parts, especially the, uh, the handle there, the pressure washer handle. Um, so some of the parts you probably won't be able to find exact copies of, and therefore the measurements and parts, the exact parts I used will be kind of irrelevant, but like I said, worth looking into your local uh, hardware store and just seeing what's around get a basic understanding of uh, pipe threads and what fittings are available to you and what pressures they're rated at before you go messing around um, like I said even at a low PSI of like 125 with a metal a heavy metal projectile this thing can be pretty dangerous so um, that was my little disclaimer there but anyway I'll get into the exacts of how this gun was built. So as I stated in my first video, this is a 3000 PSI rated pressure washer handle. I got this one from Mills Fleet Farm. Um, if you have one of those, if you're in the Midwest and you have one, they should have this exact handle. It did have a long wand on the end of it. It's probably about two feet and I believe it was a stainless wand. Uh, fortunately enough, that was just threaded into the front of the trigger there right here and that was just a quarter inch NPT threads so I uh, undid though I unthreaded that and then I have a quarter inch NPT male to male coupling so half it is threaded into the trigger and the other half is threaded into a 3 ace by quarter inch NPT reducer that fitting is then threaded into the back of the QEV um, that is a 3 8 inch NPT fitting on there this brass piece here is a 3 8 inch NPT T then it has all three of these right here with the Teflon tape on them except for this one are also 3 8 inch NPT male to male couplers. This one goes to a 45 degree cast elbow that goes to a 3 8 inch NPT to quarter inch reducer. Then there's a quarter inch male to male coupling and then that goes to this really specific um, self-closing 3000 PSI rated quick connect hydraulic fitting. I got this at a place local to me, it's called Price Hose Center. Uh, Granger would probably also carry this part and Fastenal would probably also carry something very similar to this. Um, what you're going to want to look up is something like uh, hydraulic fittings and then just find one that is self-closing it's going to have this little nipple on the end of it uh, ones that aren't self-closing will just have a hole through them you can't use one of those in this particular setup 
Um, then up here, I have another 3 8 inch NPT male to male fitting. It goes into, and it's hidden right now, so sorry you can't see this, but it goes into a 3 8 to half inch compression fitting. Then the stainless steel barrel runs that entire length inside there, and that is just clipped on with a compression fitting. Uh, if you look at some of my other videos, you'll be able to see that better. This is really tight on there, this PVC coupling over it. This is just, this black PVC part here is just for cosmetics. It makes it look a little bit better. Um, but what it is, I don't have measurements for this off the top of my head. It's pretty much just fit over that compression fitting really snugly. Then there is a fitting which goes onto the PVC barrel itself. And like I said, there is a stainless steel uh, barrel inside there. Now for a little different information here, this is the Chromali 9 ounce paintball CO2 tank. I ended up completely removing the fitting on there, the valve. Uh, if you look at my first how-to video, I said that I had originally drilled that valve out, removed all the internals of it. Um, this right now is just, like I said earlier, this is just a 3 8 inch male to male coupling. In order to use this particular bottle, or any CO2 bottle for that matter, that's from a paintball gun, you'll need to get a 3 8 inch NPT tap. Um, I had to take the valve out and then re-tap the threads into this bottle. If you're not comfortable doing that, uh, don't do it. And I can show you my other bottle that I use, which also does need a little bit of work. Um, let me get that set up and I'll go over the basics of that. And then after that, I'll go over how a QEV works for you. Okay, here is the other bottle that you can use. This one is also not the safest thing to use, in all honesty, um, but I'll show you kind of what's going on with it. This is a aluminum bottle off a SodaStream carbonated beverage maker. Uh, normally, it would have uh, just a plastic wrapping on it. I cut that off of there. Um, my other one, in some of my other videos, I use this bottle. And all I did was I powder coated it black. I have my own powder coating set up, so I just did that for purely cosmetic reasons. You could also spray paint it or leave it as is or even polish it. Do whatever you want there. Um, but in order to use this with a 3 8 inch fitting, as I have on off of that brass T on my gun, you need to do a couple of things. First thing you need to do is you need to remove this valve. Normally, this valve would have threads on it. I machine these off and I'm going to uh, machine on a 3 8 inch NPT uh, on there. Uh, it currently doesn't have any threads, but when you would get this from SodaStream, whether it was a brand new bottle or a used one that was empty, which I highly suggest getting one of those. First of all, they're cheap. Secondly, you don't have to mess around with relieving pressure. That being said, if you do get a new one and you're not going to use it in a soda stream, you need to depress. There's a valve inside here, which I'll show uh, that these internals right here are actually from. I'll go into that here in just a second. But anyway, uh, in order, before you do any work, it could be very, very dangerous if you were to try and drill into this or separate the valve from the body uh, without first releasing all the CO2. So what you do is, like I said, there was a valve inside here and you have to depress it and release all the gas. Obviously you want to do that in a non-confined space so you don't die from uh, asphyxiation from breathing in straight carbon dioxide. Um, there's not a ton in here, but still, better to do that outside. Anyway, back to the story. You're going to have to unthread this. It's in there extremely tight. I already have it loosened. Um, the best way to do it, in my opinion, would be with a wrench and then a rubber strap wrench on the body of this uh, cylinder or you could potentially put this in a vise and use the strap wrench on here either way you're going to need some specialized tools in order to do this properly um, but anyway you take the valve out of there and actually once I have this unthreaded here these threads 
on both sides obviously are actually 3 8 inch NPS. Uh, NPS is National Pipe Standard or Straight and NPT is National Pipe Tapered. Um, for all the fittings you're probably going to be able to find in your local hardware store, they're probably going to be NPT, which is what I'm running on the gun. In order to use this safely, you should be running uh, NPS, um, which is why I'm having to make this, kind of getting off topic here. But anyway, if you get this valve out, you can, this isn't the most safe procedure, but what you can do is you can thread in your NPT fitting in here. The thing is, it's not going to grip very much, so it's pretty unsafe. I don't suggest doing that. I have done it, and I have brought the system up to about 525 PSI. But once again, it's not very safe. I definitely wouldn't suggest doing it, and that's the exact reason why I'm making this new fitting that uses NP. Uh, T on one side and NPS on the other. Um, if you have access to uh, some tools like a drill press uh, that has a half inch chuck or you have access to a lathe, I would suggest doing it this way. So what you do is you take your valve out. It originally had these internals in it right here. Uh, you have to take these out. This was threaded into the bottom of this valve. Uh, I drilled this valve out so I can't really show you what that looked like, but you have to get those internals out of there. And then what you do next is I took this on the lathe and I ground the proprietary threads off of it so that I can tap it for NPT. This side is 3 8 NPS. And then I drilled out the entire thing on the lathe to a half inch inside diameter so that it flows really well. Alright, now I'll go over how a QEV works. So this silver part here is a QEV, or quick exhaust valve. They're very, very simple. There's only one moving part, and I will go over how that works. Unfortunately, I'm not going to take it apart. Uh, all my fittings are completely airtight which is a must in a QEV. If you have a leak, it could automatically shoot, which is obviously something you don't want to happen. So I'm not going to be taking it apart just because it probably won't leak, but I don't really want to risk it. Hopefully you can get a basic understanding of how this works. There's probably also like GIFs or just diagrams of how these things work, but I'll try and explain it as best I can here. What this is, is it's uh, three pieces total. There's only one moving part. This one is an Alpha 3 8 inch NPT QEV. I bought this from Fastenal. You can also get them on eBay. They are usually in a square format when you get them on eBay. Or you can get them from Granger has close to the exact same valve. So anyway, how this thing works is it's hollow on the inside. It has a 3 8 inch NPT hole here. It has a 3 8 inch NPT hole here, but it also has a uh, small shaft with a hole in it, a tube, that goes to about here on the inside of this body. And then this part is threaded on as you can see, and it has a 3 8 inch NPT thread on this fitting here as well. So how this works is there is a rubber diaphragm inside here, it takes up the entire inside diameter of the QEV and how it works is when you pressurize the QEV normally you pressurize from this side uh, so I'll go over how that works normally you pressurize from this side you'd add the you fill from here it pushes the diaphragm against the pipe inside here and closes it off and then what happens is the pressure bypasses it and would go and fill your chamber. Then in order to fire, what you do is you have to release the pressure from behind the diaphragm. What happens then is because it's low pressure back there, the diaphragm flies backwards and stays shut and then the air escapes straight out the barrel. In my particular setup, I fill from the chamber side which is through here, this fitting here. 
and that's why it has to be one that automatically closes because if it were to stay open all the air would just release out of it as soon as you disconnected the uh, fitting from it. So anyway, how my system works is I fill from the chamber side, it goes straight into the CO2 chamber and it also goes up here and in order to make this work filling from the chamber side you need to drill a very tiny hole you can even use something like a sewing needle or a safety pin or something along those lines uh, you push a hole through the very outer edge of the diaphragm that's inside there then you need to have a spring on this side of the diaphragm that pushes the valve shut that way when the air comes in not only does it go into your chamber but it comes up here at first it's kind of going out the barrel just a tiny little bit but then what starts to happen is the air actually goes through the hole in the diaphragm assisted by the pressure of the spring behind it it seats the, the valve against the barrel and then proceeds to pressurize both the chamber and the area behind the piston to whatever PSI you have at that point you can disconnect the hose and then when you want to fire all that happens is you pull your trigger and the air once again escapes from behind the valve and allows full air to flow out the barrel hey guys it's getting dark here so I'm gonna have to make this quick uh, today I'm gonna be firing off one of my little homemade bullets more or less it's just a double and then a wood screw and a nut on the end of it um, try and give you some scale here as to how big it is. I actually don't have measurements off the top of my head. It's probably like a two inch. Um, yeah, I'm just going to fire that at a laptop. So I got everything loaded up here. It's at about 520 PSI. I'm going to try firing with uh, both hands here while holding the camera. I also have the uh, slow motion set up out there um, so we can hopefully get a cool picture of what it's doing when it hits the laptop. Uh, if you notice there is a mark on the laptop, I actually shot a bolt through it a couple days ago. Um, didn't end up filming that, just wanted to mess around a little bit. So, uh, But yeah, let's uh, get to shooting. Let's go take a look. There's the double. A little worse for wear. It uh, almost tore the screw out and uh, messed it up pretty good. Uh, let's take a look at what it did to the laptop itself here. Some pretty nasty damage obviously it didn't fly straight like I was hoping that the nut would do um, went in at quite an angle there let's open it up and take a look oh yeah it did quite a number on the inside there let's see if we can get a side shot of that bulging out pretty good this laptop was fully closed and if we take a look at the keys here blow out the space bar um, little ditty there and uh, let's dump this out here. And there's what it did to the key area. So, oh, actually, yeah, it, it did. Uh, sorry, my crappy camera work here. Uh, it did go down in there pretty deep, actually. Um, but due to the fact that it hit sideways, lost a lot of its energy just uh, messing up the screen there. So, yeah, uh, hope you enjoyed the how to video and this crappy shot. And stay tuned for more. I am almost done with my fitting on the lathe, so hopefully I can get this gun up to like 600 or 700 PSI. Uh, I think the diaphragm in the valve is good for about 750. All the other fittings are rated at uh, at least 1,000, so I'm not too concerned there. But yeah, thanks for subscribing and liking my videos, and uh, I'll keep trying to produce some decent content for you guys. Have a good day. Oh, just from, oh, there she is again. She just loves interrupting my how-to videos, I guess. <laughs>